The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on the CrossRef. My name is Lisa. I'm going to be uh, facilitating for Juan this morning. And before I get into a little bit of bio information on Juan, um, a few housekeeping items. You'll notice on your screen that you have a chat box or a questions box. Feel free to use either of those boxes if you have questions, if you have comments along the way, um, if you're having difficulty hearing us, anything like that. Uh, type those in, and I'll be monitoring those as the webinar goes on. We will answer all questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, another thing, this course is approved for one hour of NBC credit. So within 24 hours after the webinar, you should receive some information on how to obtain that credit. So um, without further ado, I'm going to introduce Juan. He is a certified dental technician, a master ceramist, and a sustaining member of the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. He is also a graduate master technician from the Las Vegas Institute, a past life master technician, and a fellow of the Academy of Comprehensive Aesthetics. After studying with some of the best master technicians in dentistry, he has become known for his extraordinary dental technology skills. He has been chosen as a premier master ceramist by the Academy of Comprehensive Aesthetics and headmaster ceramist for the ACE Aesthetics program. As a previous lab owner, Juan is the inventor of the CrossWest system. He joined LK Dental Studio in 2008, bringing his incredible skills and expertise to the laboratory and is dedicated to meeting the needs of dentists throughout the U.S. So I hope you all enjoy the webinar. And I'm going to pass the reins over to Juan. Go ahead, Juan. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I want to thank you uh, this morning for joining us. I know it's very hard sometimes to step away for one hour, especially early this morning. I want to thank all the clinicians and all the technicians that are listening to this webinar. Uh, it is very exciting to me to present this new product uh, that WebMix is releasing. So uh, let's start and, uh, and let me uh, express my gratitude to WebMix to uh, allow me to show you this great product. As you know, uh, on the aesthetic dental treatment, the ability of the dentist to communicate the location and orientation of the patient's facial landmarks to the dental technician will dictate the success of the aesthetic outcome. As we know, a beautiful smile be begins with a, with a solid foundation. That means that there is many items that we need for that foundation. For example, a prescription that is detail, a great impression, great bites, a face bow, and many other items. But also, it is extremely important to be able to receive uh, precision points to be able to establish the midline and horizontal line for the final aesthetics. A pleasing dental appearance is subjective. It is the appreciation of the shade shape and arrangement of the teeth and the relationship to the gingiva lips and facial features. As we know, we need to achieve as a team a balance between the facial features and the smile design. For example, on my personal um, experience, and I'm sure a lot of the technicians have the same experience and also dentists, um, in the past I've been getting sometimes uh, one to three records when the doctor is taking a midline or horizontal line record. The reason it is that sometimes the products that we have right now on the market, they are not very accurate. Even though the clinician is doing an amazing job to be able to take the, the records for us, it's still that they are not 100% accurate. So um, sometimes I, wa I was able to get one to three records in my office and sometimes the doctor will tell me, well, you know, I don't know if the first one or the last one is the best, but just you choose what you want to do with the case. 
uh, unfortunately, if I choose the wrong uh, item that he sends me, uh, maybe the midline might be canted or the horizontal inside select position might be canted. And that will mean that, uh, you know, the case is not going to be uh, a very successful case. Uh, just to kind of show you a couple of the examples that I get, you know, uh, on every day, and I'm sure you guys do too, and this is what we're using, that this is the standard right now on the, on the market, you know. Uh, we're getting, you know, vendor brushes, we're getting the Q-tips, and even pencils. I, I got pencils and pens in the past, you know, and it's kind of funny to see it, but that, that's what we're used to it. The problem with these three examples that I am showing you on my personal experience is that sometimes the bite material will not allow the dentist enough working time to be able to make the uh, adjustments needed uh, to be able to record the midline and horizontal line. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes the bite materials, they set too quickly, and by the time the doctor is able to set back, look at the patient's face, and be able to modify, you know, that record, the bite material is already set. Again, that is why sometimes I get, you know, one to three records in a case, and again, the doctor uh, is telling me, you know, please use, uh, you know, use uh, number one or number three, you know, uh, rotate that 10 degrees to the right, 10 degrees to the left, but again, I do not have the peace of mind, and I know the doctor doesn't have the peace of mind that this is a solid record. The other issue that we have, too, is that some of these materials, uh, as we know, for example, with the plastics of the vendor brushes, uh, the plastics, they have memory, so if we bend the plastic, you know, uh, for the record, the, the, the movement, uh, that plastic might go back to the or original position. Also with the Q-tips and pencils, you know, if we are disinfecting these, uh, these items just with the moisture of the disinfectant, uh, they might work, you know, and also they might, they, they are easy to break. You know, on the perfect world, as we know, in a totally symmetric face, the dental midline and the facial midline should coincide, but this is not the case very often. Unfortunately, you know, we have cases like this one that the midline is deviated, you know, to the left and is canted and is not matching 100% matching the lower midline. Uh, so this is something very important that we have to, uh, we have to be able to take a record uh, so the technician is able to create the new midline position that is ideal for, for a particular case. Also, the other item that we require is to be able to take a record of the, you know, the, the incisal edge position. Uh, again, uh, it is imperative for us to be able to, to take, to, to be able to get that, that, uh, that piece of information from the doctor to be able to reestablish the, the new incisal edge position. As we know, you know, it's not very uncommon that sometimes uh, the canines are not on the same uh, occlusal plane. Uh, also, we have patients that they have cranial distortions, uh, patients that they have symmetrical and asymmetrical faces. So there is a, a huge complexity sometimes on, on, all, on all these patients that we see. Uh, sometimes we perceive the patients that is the perfect 90 degree angle, you know, that, that we need to achieve midline horizontal line, but unfortunately uh, it has to be balanced around the facial features. If you see this picture, uh, this case was mounted with a face bow on this uh, flat occlusal uh, plate you know, and as you can see, the cant of the canines and the midline, this patient has some major, you know, uh, uh, facial uh, and cranial distortions. So again, we need, we need to establish uh, what do we want to accomplish with this case, and also we need to make sure that all this, this uh, kind of information is transferred to the dental technician. Unfortunately, as a technician, you know, we would love to have the patient and see the patient in our, in, you know, in our uh, offices to be able to uh, take a look at, at, at the, the, the landmarks of the, of the patients, but unfortunately we don't have the luxury of that. Most of our cases, 
you know, they ship UPS or FedEx, and, and the only way to relate and to be able to uh, capture all the information is by the records that the dentist is providing us. So, uh, just to let you know, this is actually uh, very exciting for me to present. This is called the CrossRef. And just to explain to you about the mechanics of the CrossRef, as you can see, there is a arch on the, an arch with some retention groups, and also there is a, a midline and horizontal line, the bars. In the middle of these two components, there is an attachment. So you can separate these two pieces, so they are going to be independent from each other, but when you put them together through the attachment system, will become one. Also, you can notice that one of the bars is longer for the midline than the other one. The, you always want to use the longest bar for the midline uh, for the nose. And the reason why is because you want to capture the highest point of the reach of the nose for, the, for your midline. Again, the nice thing about this particular record is that a dentist, when he takes the record and he's putting the bite material, there is no waste, meaning that they don't have to be retaking this record two and three times to be able to provide uh, the ideal record to the technician. As you can see, uh, the suggestion is to place some bite material uh, on the lower arch and also on the uh, upper part of the uh, retention groups of the cross ref arch. Uh, any bite material will work. Uh, and after that, we want to put this into place into the patient's mouth. The patient can close slowly into the retention groups. But also you want to make sure that, you know, that little box with attachment is right dead center within the uh, area of the midline. One of the important things that, that this is uh, huge is that you want the bite material to set. Versus in the past, the doctors that were actually working against time, so they have to work very, very fast to be able to take that midline horizontal line record against the time of the bite material setting. With this system, it's actually the opposite way. Once you put the bite material in the patient's mouth with the cross ref arch, you want the patient to close into place and make sure that it's fully set. Once the bite material is fully set, then you have then then you can do uh, then you can take your record. To be able to do that, you will slide into the attachment the midline and horizontal line bar. These bars are locked at 90 degree angles, and this is obviously for patients that have a symmetrical faces. Uh, when you slide the bar, the bars have actually some movement uh, just in case if you want to adjust the midline or horizontal line. You'll have about two millimeters to the right and two millimeters to the left and also you can torque it to the right or to the left. So that way you have some room to be able to customize this record. Also, as we know, we have patients that, that we have, they have uh, extremely long noses. And sometimes even, you know, the bend of brushes or the pencil, the nose is right, you know, right in the middle of the record and it's, it is kind of hard, hard to remove those noses. So, we came out with a nation extender. That extender is actually attached to the male and female part of the attachments. Uh, that, that will create uh, more room for you if necessary. The extender, it is about 35 millimeters long, you know. Uh, that particular extender, um, it doesn't have to be sent to the dental technician. They don't need that. You can keep that in your uh, office. Uh, in fact, every box that you buy of cross refs, uh, it will come with, with two nation extenders. Uh, once you take that record, you know, uh, you, you will keep that uh, nation extender in your office. Also, uh, you know, what you want to do is that, uh, you know, by losing this screw on the front, you are able to, uh, you know, align the bars any way you want. 
again, this is a 90, 90 degree locking position for any patient that has, you know, pretty much uh, good symmetry on their faces. Also, the other, the other uh, component of this particular system is that you are actually able to customize the record. If you have a patient that has an asymmetrical face and a perfect 90 degree angle might not work for that patient, then what you are able to do is you can take the front screw out of the uh, cross ref and then the first bar you take that off and you flip that over and put it back into, into place with the screw. By flipping the bar over, you gain independent movement of the bars. And the reason why is because on the bars, they have two little notches that they will click if you want a perfect 90 degree angle. But if you want independent bar of the movements, then you can uh, unclick the, uh, the two bars, flip one over, and then put the screw back, and you will have independent moving, movement of the bars if you want to customize this, this, this type of record. This is extremely important because, again, now you have the flexibility to have your perfect 90 degree angle if you choose to according to the patient, or if you have that patient that has asymmetrical faces and you have to customize the record, you are, still have the option to uh, gain the independent movement that you need. This is extremely important. Uh, one of the things that after you are done with your record, after you make sure that your midline and horizontal bars are aligned properly on the, on exactly on the landmarks that you want to, uh, you know, to record, you want to use a self-cure acrylic. And you'll have two small holes around the, uh, the screw and one in the center of the screw. So you want to put a micro tip all the way to the back of the bars and get some self-cure um, uh, acrylic. This will lock the play, this will uh, make sure that the, um, the record is locked into place and nothing is going to be moving during shipping. My suggestion is, is to use uh, some like lock attempt, uh, you know, or, or similar products to that. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't suggest to use a flowable composite because the reason why is that sometimes the flowable composite will cure just on the surface, but on the back of the bars it still will be soft or, or mushy. So my suggestion will, is to use some type of self cure acrylic. Anything that you are using for your temporaries will, will, will work great. Now, one of, the, one of the biggest mistakes that uh, we can do once you take this record, uh, take the record out of the patient's mouth, and this is how it's, it's just going to, you know, it's going to come out. So, so a couple things that you want to make sure that you want to see. Uh, number one, you want to make sure that the record has been locked into place by tightening the screw and also by placing uh, the self acrylic in the front of the record. And the way to ship this item is that the dentist have to uh, slide out the attachment out of the arch. So then that way when you ship this particular uh, record, uh, you are going to be shipping this record in two pieces. The reason why is because if you ship this in one piece, then the record, uh, you know, is going to be very hard to package and you have the possibility that this record might bend or might, or might break during shipping. So what you want to do just like this upper uh, picture is that you want to separate once the uh, self-cure acrylic is fully set, separate the two items and ship the two items, you know, um, just like that. Uh, one of the things that you want to make sure too is that you know you you want to record your indentations of the uh, you know of the incisal edge positions on the upper and the lower arch that you are able to capture that on your bite material, and then once you get this to uh, the dental technician, what the dental technician is to do is that if you see on the upper picture there is two bars, two small bars that they run horizontally 
in the big uh, uh, midline bar, you have to clip, clip off the excess of the bar. The reason why, once the record has been taken, uh, those bars are long enough because, again, we want to capture the highest point of the reach of the nose. Once that is captured, we don't need that, uh, you know, we don't need that excess of the bar. So, what you do, you just take some scissors and clip off the excess beyond that. That way you are able to uh, mount your case in a semi-adjustable articulator. The beauty, the beauty of this particular system is that, you know, uh, it's universal. You can use any articulator that you have uh, in your office. And, and again, the only restriction is that you need to clip off the excess of the bars after the record has been taken. As you can see on this case, I mounted the, uh, you know, uh, my case and on the on that upper picture, and then I, you know, finalized the ceramics on the lower. Uh, one of the things that you want to see is in the midline bar that you have, there is an opening right at center. I usually like to place my, my midline right at center into, the, into that opening. That way, uh, the doctor knows exactly where that midline posi position has to be established. And obviously, uh, the incisal edge position has to be parallel with the horizontal bar. As you can see, this is, uh, this is uh, the final case. The midlines, they match perfectly. The horizontal uh, inside storage position is great. Uh, one of the things that, that I want to relate to you is that this is an amazing product that we have now. Uh, this is a great tool that we needed for many, many, many years. You know, uh, I've, been, I've been in this business uh, many years already, and it's very exciting for me to have this product on my hands. Uh, the reason why is because, again, now oh, I see uh, 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 procedures. Uh, and again, the reason why was because, again, we were working again against the by material, uh, the materials that we have for many edit. With this particular uh, uh, system, the cross ref, the doctor is able to take a record with that. the doctor is able to take the record and modify it according to you know to, to the landmarks of the patient's face. Also, the beauty of this whole thing is that the patient, the, the doctor doesn't, doesn't have to take two or three or four records to hopefully he can get one, one record decent enough. This is one record that you need to take. You are able to capture your midline and your horizontal line, uh, symmetrical and asymmetrical faces. Uh, some of my experiences with the cross ref uh, some of my, my, my clients, what they like to do is that when they take a record, uh, now they are actually training their staff to do that because, again, in the past, uh, the doctors, they were only doing those type of records. And, and again, now what happens is that the doctor is teaching the staff, the staff is taking this record, they're putting the bite material, they're putting the cross the cross ref arch, they're putting the midline horizontal bars. Uh, meanwhile the doctor is taking a nice, you know, cup of coffee, he can come back five minutes later, double check the work of the assistant. If he agrees with that, then he can go ahead and, and uh, put some uh, you know some uh, self cure uh, if he doesn't doesn't agree with that, then he can always has the, the chance or the option to modify it. Uh, some of the clinicians, what they like to do is that they are actually uh, using the cross ref. 
they are taking a full face picture of the patient, they are blowing that up into a, a big screen to, uh, to verify the, the midline or the horizontal line is a line of, what, of the landmarks that they want to uh, capture. And if it is, then great, they lock it. If it's not, then they're able to modify that. Uh, so this is an excellent tool. You know, for the dentists that, that are on this webinar, I would highly suggest, uh, you know, for your dental labs to get involved with this. You know. or at least to be able to, a clinician takes a record that is not 100% accurate uh, to capture the midline or horizontal line for the final ceramics, what is going to happen is that, you know, as technicians we will follow those records. And if, the, if I'm doing a 10 unit veneer case for you, or your technician is doing a 10 unit veneer case for you, what might happen is that the case might come back, they're following your record, and maybe the midline might be canted, or the horizontal line in sisal edge position might be canted. Unfortunately with those cases, as you know, and as a personal experience, is that it's extremely hard to fix those cases, especially when you have the patient in the chair and you need to move the mid line or the midline is scanted or the whole the whole inside solid position is scanted. And all all of this is the issue because of the original record that we're taking. You know, so to me it is extremely important to use the cross ref because again it's going to give you the peace of mind that when you get a case back from your technician, the midline and horizontal line is going to be established according to you know, to, uh, to your records. And, and again, uh, it is about also about uh, the money that we lose because if you're not able to see that case, you're losing hours on the chair, you know, that you're not able to place that case. And for us as technicians, you might send that case back to us for a repair or a remake. And we don't make any money either because we have to, you know, remake it or repair it and it might take too long to do it. So nobody wins, unfortunately, on this on this battle. Again, we're a team, you know, and I think uh, this type of record it is extremely important uh, to be able to have the peace of mind to establish those landmarks that they are extremely important to achieve maximum aesthetics on any given case. Uh, just to give you a couple of tips and techniques that that uh, that. What I have seen, you know, and just to kind of uh, I tell you what what uh, what what things I see, uh, the most common mistakes. Uh, the most common mistakes. I will start with that because it's very very important. And for the for the dentist, please uh, be you know uh, make sure that you do you do these things. And for the technicians, uh, please let your dentist to do these things. So then that way we have a, a you know a great successful case. One of the main, um, uh, you know, uh, problems that I see is that sometimes the doctor will tie the screw once the once the record is uh, done, you know, the front screw in in between the uh, midline and horizontal bars. But sometimes, unfortunately, uh, they forget to place uh, the uh, self cure acrylic around the uh, screw and in front of the screw. So what happened, you know, in shipping, things might move. So I want to make sure, number one, always, 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 please use a self-cure acrylic, any type of temporary material that you use uh, to make sure that you look that, lock that, um, that, that record into place. The second biggest mistake is that uh, sometimes the doctors are shipping the cross ref in one piece. And as I show you some of those uh, some pictures, you have to slide out after the record has been locked into place by tightening the screw and by putting the uh, self cure acrylic. Uh, you need to slide out the midline horizontal bars. They will come out in one piece, and then you will ship 
the items into pieces to your dental laboratory. And then, the, and then once the dental laboratory has that goes into place, they can clip off the excess of the bars and they can slide in the, uh, you know, the midline horizontal bars into the attachment. And then they can start working on that particular case. Uh, and then the other thing is that, you know, again, this particular record, personally, it gives you the peace of mind that you need. Uh, and, and it's extremely important, you know, again, just my, my original example. If you are taking one to three records to record the midline or horizontal line, and it's still you are frustrated at the end of the, the day that you don't know that that was uh, an accurate record, uh, this is your answer, the cross-ref, this is your answer. Uh, I've been working with, with the cross-ref for a little bit, and, uh, and you know what, I'm, I'm loving it. It is a great product. Yeah, you know, it is very accurate. Uh, the doctors, uh, they love it because, again, they have the peace of mind. And I think as a technicians, we need to get our dentists involved in the system because, you know, it, you know again, remake value for, for the technician and for the clinician, uh, it will be way less, less remakes and repairs for both of us. So again, I want to thank you uh, for joining us on this webinar for this, uh, you know, for this, this, uh, and this morning. I know for everybody, it's kind of hard to step away from the, from the operatory and from the bench, you know. But again, I really appreciate the, you know, uh, your time, and I'm hoping that uh, you guys uh, get involved with the Crossref. I think you will be extremely, extremely happy to use uh, this new system. In, in your office or in your dental lab and, and believe me it will give you the peace of mind that you need. So again I want to thank you for, uh, for, uh, for being with me for this, uh, this morning and, uh, and yeah if you guys have any questions uh, you know I'm, I'm happy to, to answer those. We do have a couple questions for you Juan. Uh, the first one that came through why do you put bite material on both the lower teeth and the upper arch of the product? Okay, the reason why is because, again, you want to capture, you always want to capture the indentations of the incisal edge, edges of the lower and the upper arch. Because, again, you want to have a positive seating on that arch, so you want to capture again all your lower uh, incisors and all your upper incisors. So you want to make sure that you capture that, so that way, when a laboratory is mounted on the upper arch uh, or, or a wax up on the upper arch, they have a solid stop on the lower arch to be able to to seat that uh, you know that uh, that cross ref. And how long does it take to complete a cross-breath bite record? You know what? The cross, you know, um, again, it is an average of uh, four to five minutes. Some doctors are getting, you know, again, some doctors are getting extremely fast at these things. Uh, you know, some doctors are just doing it within, within three minutes, you know. Uh, but again, it is about five minutes. Uh, that, that is an average that, 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 that doctors are doing it, but it's very, very fast. I think uh, the nice thing about it is that you are able to, uh, you know, that you are able to um, take a record, you know, and I think, uh, and, and you are able to modify it, you know, so within five minutes you can make any modifications that you need and you are able to, uh, you know, and you are able to have a very high quality record for that, but it's about an average of five minutes. Um, one of the other common questions up here says, did I hear you say that you do not adjust the horizontal and vertical bars until after the bite material has set? Yes, yes. So, so this is extremely important, and this is kind of a, a different way to do things. Again, we've been used to, you know, since the beginning, to start adjusting the bars. You know, you were using like a pencil or a, a bender brush or a Q-tip. We always were able, we always wanted to adjust those bars as soon as you know we put that by material, and the reason why was because the by material was setting up so quickly. With this particular system, you don't need to do that. My suggestion is to put the by material on the lower arch and on the cross ref arch, 
let the patient close into place, and let the bi material set. After it's set, then you can slide the bars and you can make all the adjustments needed. The main thing that the main thing that you want to make sure is that that little box of the attachment that is in front of the arch, you want that to be, uh, you know, dead center into your midline. Uh, again, uh, you are going to you have room for movement on those bars. You have two millimeters. You can shift them to the, shift them to the right. Two millimeters. You can shift them to the left or you can actually have a torque, right or left torque. So you have movement within the bars after everything is set. So this is extremely important because in the past you did not have that option. Uh, one more question here. It says, the name of the product lends itself to mean a cross-reference. Do you recommend using this in addition to a phase bow? using a face bow at initial records and cross-reference at the prep appointment. Yes. At this, at this time, you know, at this time, this is, this is a completely different record. Uh, again, you always want to take a face bow, you know, and then this particular record is just going to record your midline and horizontal line angles. On my particular uh, experience, again, and I know a lot of the technicians, they have that experience too, uh, Sometimes the you know the face bows that we get, unfortunately on shipping they have they have moved you know, and unfortunately sometimes some of the doctors uh, you know when they take a face bow some of of my doctors are not able to take a perfect face bow, so so sometimes I rely on the cross ref to be able to give me that midline horizontal line angles. But again the cross ref it is. Uh, a, a system that is only going to be recording your midline and horizontal line angles. Uh, your face ball is still extremely important part of your records. And then the other thing I want to mention, you still have to take a final bite after you prep your case. Uh, this, particular, this particular system, the cross ref, uh, even though we have a bite material, you know, we're only, only, only capturing the incisal edge positions of the upper and lower arch. But after you take that, you still have to take a final bite for any given case. Uh, we did have some questions regarding uh, webinars not starting on time or will we get some information. The webinar will be posted to our website in about 24 or 48 hours. So um, if you've gone on a little bit later or if you missed part of the beginning, uh, check back on our website with mix.com in about 24 to 48 hours and it should be up there. There is a link for webinars. Um, and then you will receive an email in about 24 hours um, with the information and the test needed to complete your NBC credit. So uh, all of those things will be coming to you. So if you have any other questions, just let us know that. Um, we do have some upcoming Quick Mix events that he uh, that Juan has put up on the screen here. We will be doing a webinar on Lean in the Lab on August the 6th. We'll be doing a part two webinar of the Articulator, Articulator series from Al Flashtree on August the 23rd. And then in September we're going to do an arbitrary mounting webinar. And then we'll have some coming up in October. Uh, We'll have, oh wait, no, this isn't a webinar. The date that you see there, October 7th and 8th, we will actually be hosting a Lean Symposium here in Louisville, Kentucky. So if you're interested in how you can incorporate some lean manufacturing into your own practice or your own laboratory, feel free to email us and we'll get you some further information on that symposium. So if we don't have any other questions. Um, we can go ahead and sign off. Or if you have anything else, feel free to email us here at Whitmix or give Juan a phone call. I'm sure um, that we can get your answers or your questions answered at that point. So let us know. And thank you again for joining us this morning. Thank you very much, Juan, for presenting for us. And um, I hope that everyone has a little extra knowledge about the cross trust this morning. Thank you so much, and thanks everybody again for joining us this morning, and uh, I hope uh, you're excited as I am for this new product. And please, if you have any questions, uh, you know, you can 
contact WebMEX and I will be more than happy to help you. Excellent. Well, thanks, guys. We'll talk to you later.